What's going on, Bully World? This is Zeb. I'm your host of Bully Talk with Zeb Pitts. And tonight, my special guest is Nick Legos. Nick is the founder of the ABKC Veterans. Tonight, we're going to learn more about him. We're going to learn more about his time in the Marine Corps, uh, what's going on with the ABKC Veterans Organization. And tonight, he's going to make some special announcements uh, for the first time here tonight on Bully Talk with Zaire Pitts. Uh, please welcome my guest, Nick. How you doing, Nick? I am doing fantastic. How about yourself, Seb? I'm doing great, man. It's good, it's good to talk to you, man. <laughs> How yeah, been? yeah. It's been about a month since we've seen each other down at uh, Bully Roots 4, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's weird just not having your camera in front of me. <laughs> yeah, now now we're doing it on the phone, so it's a little little diff little bit different. Yes, definitely, definitely. You get out into any uh shows this weekend? I did not make it out to any shows this weekend. Um just uh was a convenient time for me, but uh I haven't seen many of the show results. I don't know too many of the winners, but uh I've been trying to, you know, see what's going on. I'm sure that they'll be published real soon. I'd like to see who uh, who did good, you know. Well, let's take it back a little bit because for a lot of people okay. I know, I always like to introduce uh, the background of the person I'm talking to. So tonight we're going to learn a little more about, about you tonight, Nick. So where, where are you originally from, Nick? I'm originally from uh, Binghamton, New York, and uh, it's currently where I reside now currently where you reside now how, how were yes, things uh, growing up growing up for you in Binghamton New York uh it was uh you know normal uh normal type of upbringing I had a single single parent by my mother um uh, we lived together uh you know she raised me uh I had my sister uh also and my nephew who's uh he's uh 22 now I'm 30 I'm 32 no he's 25 sorry and uh, I'm 32, uh, so we were almost like brothers, um, you know, a little bit of an age gap, just weird to be an uncle so early in age, and, uh, you know, I played a lot of sports growing up. Uh, all my friends, like from kindergarten on, uh, are still friends today, you know. Um, you know, obviously, I, I have a lot of good friends from the military and whatnot that I met uh, while serving. Um, but uh, we always played the same sports, you know, whether it was uh, soccer, football in the, in the fall, you know, uh, bat always basketball in the winter. And uh, we played for our local uh, CYO league uh, for our church. And um, I graduated in 2000, and three weeks later I was uh, in uh, Paris Island, South Carolina for boot camp. Now, what 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 was the decision that actually drove you to to want to become a Marine? Um, the reason that I, I I had always wanted to be in the military growing up, like I remember, I think it was like first or second grade, uh, Desert Storm. I remember it was an Army soldier that came in, and uh, he came into the classroom. One of uh, my classmates, it was his cousin, I believe. And uh, it just, like, I just, like, really, I remember writing to him and him writing me back, and there was, like, a form of patriotism there um, that I learned at an early age. Um, you know, uh, my father, he was a Marine. Um, all my cousins, they're, they're all in the Army. Um, so, I mean, I had to one-up them, you know. <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta go the higher route. You know, and go Marine Corps because you know, uh, you know the the it's considered the the more elite of uh, you know the fighting forces. But um, that's just you know talking trash between different service members. Uh, everybody does their job, and anybody you know, I I salute anybody who is serving currently or has been active duty or even in the reserves. Uh, you know, it's all it's all a brotherhood. We're all out there, and we're all patriotic, and we're all serving our country in some way, shape, or form. Talk about the first day on Paris Island. Wow, um, it, was, it was pitch black. They drove us in on a bus, and they 
uh, they kind of drive you around in circles so that you really don't have an idea where you are. And then they drop you off, and immediately a drone instructor runs up the stairs, and he starts barking orders, you know, get off my bus, you know, you're now property of the United States Marine Corps, blah, 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 get on the yellow foot footprint. I just remember getting off that bus as fast as I could and getting on the uh, yellow footprints, put my hands uh, standing at the position of attention, and uh, just waiting for the order to enter the golden doors at Paris Island uh, where you start the processing um, to basically uh, be physically ready. Um, and they cut your hair and do all that, issue you all your gear, um, and then you go to your platoon. So, and then uh, the three-month training process starts. Now, now, were you prepared for what what you were about to embark on, Did, or was it just totally beyond what you could imagine going through boot camp? I was, uh, see, I always uh, used, used a quote that my uncle told me. He was a Vietnam veteran, Marine. And he, and he said, boot camp's 90% mental and 10% physical. He's like, don't take nothing personally. So I always used that, um, you know, I always thought of that. So I did go in there mentally strong, but I was broken down to what they want you to be broken down to, to be able to build you back up into a, you know, United States Marine as they want, you know. They do break you down. I have my, I, ha, I remember having my period of being broken down and then being built back up. It's the whole process of boot camp, you know, and that goes for all services. Did, did it ever get to that point of the edge where you just like, I don't know if I really want to do this? Um, all, I knew, all I knew is if I decided that I was going to quit, I would be there longer. They make that process longer than if you just graduate on time. So my main goal was just focusing on that graduation, doing everything that I had to to the best of my ability. And that's what drove me was that goal. Uh, you know, we did have dropouts in the platoon. Um, you know, people who actually just like, you know, said, I, you know, either they mentally lost it and said, I can't do this anymore and started crying and whatnot. And they left, and, you know, they were in a, I don't even know, a separation platoon of some sort when I graduated. So they were still there, still being generally treated the same way. You know, it's once, once, you're, once you're there on base, there ain't no turning back, you know. So I always just completed everything that I had to complete and always gave it 110%. Now, once boot camp was completed, and you were done. Did you did you want to go into any specialized units within the Marine Corps at, during that time? Um, see, like uh, my my MOS was uh, Combat Engineer 1371, and um, I was told there was like three different routes that you could go with an air wing, and you'd be doing like runway maintenance, you know, building runways, stuff like that. You could be with, like, a support group that might be putting up bridges and doing, like, um, generalized construction. Or you could be with a demo, like, basically with the infantry and be working with demolitions. And explosives sound the best to me, so I, that's the route that I wanted to take. <laughs> Luckily, I got stationed with the 1st Marine Division. And uh, I was, you know, able to do exactly what I wanted to do because I was uh, with the division and not with the support group or the air wing. So I was with uh, infantry units attached to them. Um, and basically, you know, I got to work with C-14 team Dynamite. Where was well, your first many, Amongst many other, other explosives also. Where was your first deployment overseas? My first deployment was the uh, Marine Expeditionary Unit, and basically that is America's 911 force. That's uh, if an embassy was to uh, need to be evacuated or we need humanitarian assistance in some part of the world or um, we need to invade 
somewhere we need to, you know, there, take hostile action um, in a country, we would be the first ones in, uh, being that we're already out on ship ready to do that. Um, but we had one incident um, when we were doing training in Kuwait where, uh, um, you know, two Marine, or one Marine died and another one was shot, actually, uh, by locals in Kuwait that turned out to be, uh, they had ties to Al-Qaeda, and that, that was, a, uh, you know, an attack on us during a training operation, but in a foreign country. Um, so, I mean, um, I got to go to Hawaii, uh, Singapore, Saipan, did humanitarian assistance in East Timor, um, Bahrain, Kuwait, Jordan, uh, Australia. I got to go to Australia, and that was no training at all. That was for pure pleasure, so that was fun. That was probably the best place that I got to go. Um, and then I came home in December of uh, 22, or I'm sorry, 2002, and... Uh, I spent just a few weeks back in the United States before I was sent back to Kuwait to prepare for the invasion of Iraq. Oh wow! How was that? So, what was that experience like? Oh man, it uh, it was tough. I mean, you didn't. I, I guess uh, coming off a of deployment, not expecting to come back and then turn right around. But I mean, we all knew. We saw the buildup when we were there, and we were just there tra doing training operations. So, I mean, it was in the back of the head, and I, and I guess I didn't expect it, but at the same time, you, you don't know when you're going to get called in some situations. And uh, it was actually two days after we got back from uh, Christmas leave and our post-deployment leave from the 11th uh, Marine Expeditionary Unit, uh, two days after everyone was back is when they told us that we would be redeployed. So, I mean, uh, it was, I mean, we had a few a few weeks of uh, time to get ready and um, I got to say your goodbyes to your family, um, that type of thing, you know, until you get back. And then uh, we redeployed actually uh, two days after my 21st birthday. So wow. I, was at, I, I, I got to party it up on my 21st, at least in the United States. Talk about the, the, the levels, the different levels of danger that you had to deal with over there, knowing the simple fact that most of the time people, they didn't have uniforms. So you really didn't know who was who, correct? Uh, yeah. During my third tour is when it was like that. Um, I got redeployed in 2004 uh, back to Iraq after coming back from the, sec from the second tour, but the first tour to Iraq during the invasion after that was done. Um, that's when it, all, it changed, you know, probably six months after the invasion to where you were, you were, your normal civilians were if a threat because there was no army that wore distinguishing uniforms so that made it extremely difficult you know and the proximity of imminent danger then becomes a lot closer before you know it um, and obviously they were using you know sometimes crowded areas like the suicide vests they those those are terrible you know um, the worst is a car with packed with like 50, um, you know, 155 millimeter, you know, uh, artillery shells that blows up, you know, and could be right on top of you. I mean, this is all on, it's all on YouTube, you know. Uh, the general public can educate themselves through some of the things on YouTube, but you can't always believe everything you see. But there's so much on there that, you know, um, Social media, has, I, I think social media played the biggest uh, role in this war, you know, in the two wars themselves that have gone on in the past 10 years. Do, do you feel during that time that you were able to make a difference? 
Um, in Iraq? Yes. Uh, that's uh, in Iraq specifically. Um, I like coming back from the f the first tour there. Um, I mean, I felt I made a difference because the people loved us. I mean, you know, after we ousted Saddam, and the people loved us. And you know, I mean, they were in a pretty really bad predicament because they had just lost their entire economy of money. Um, because of the war, you know, like, you know, that Saddam money was worth nothing, you know, it was just, it was all over the place. I mean, you could pick up a million dollars of it, it wasn't worth, like, anything anymore, you know. Um, but the people loved us. But then, you know, after, I guess you could say, um, the U.S. had been in there a few months, and the enemy had studied techniques and tactics and whatnot of what we did, they started um, a guerrilla warfare in a sense that um, that made it hard for us to operate. Um, I mean, I know that <clears throat> I know that I made it. I felt like I made a difference in my in my first tour there. My second tour was just uh, completely different because of the 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 role of the role of combat had completely changed to I don't know who the enemy is compared to you know during the first war you know you knew who they were they were blatant you know they were wearing uniforms so it was it was really really hard and I mean we lost a lot of a lot of marines um, on that tour in 2004 um, and you know that's uh it was it was a lot different you know than my first two tours you know um and it's really hard to gauge that and judge that and give you an honest answer yeah because um like you said your you said your father was in the marines uh during vietnam uh during korea actually oh korea okay yeah because uncle um, uncle, uncle was a marine uncle. Um, oh, okay in vietnam correct yeah, cause, now you um, have you have family members that were all uh, your uncles, right? Yes, and okay, he was, okay. uh, developed the case of paranoid schizophrenia because of the certain things you just never knew what would happen. Kids would have bombs yes. on them, women would have, and yes. you just and I remember you telling it was me just that. a heightened yes. witness. Yeah, so he it mm -hmm. was just I, I I can just imagine if like that's why I asked you as far as like. Uh, with the enemy that you have to face where there is no distinguished uh, uh, uniform to where there can always be just the heightened awareness of this paranoid schizophrenia and just not knowing when their next attack can occur from and from who. Sure, sure. And I can imagine and, you, you know, probably uh, during that time, did a you lot lose a lot, of, a lot of friends during that time? Um, I, You know, two friends who were very, very close to me, um, I lost. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's something that I, you know, I use them as motivation. And, you know, I wish that they were still here. But I use them as motivation um, in my life now to honor the memory rather than to think about their deaths. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I'm past that point of just, you know, just of, of grieving. Now it's about honoring their memory and, you know, doing things that will honor them forever, you know. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of Marines... A lot, you know, we we really do stick together. Like after we get out of the core, I've noticed um, it's weird. We got the show coming up in Spotsylvania next month uh, by VA Powerhouse Bullies, and I happened a, a Marine that was with me on my third tour, uh, the second to Iraq. He uh, he just happened to hit me up earlier, and he lives like a half hour away. And he's like, oh, you can come on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'll go to the Marine Corps Museum on Sunday. I'm like, this is perfect, you know. And so, you know, uh, he doesn't have any bullies himself. Uh, but it's just, you know, 
sticking together. I mean, this, I haven't seen them in 10 years since I left Iraq, literally. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's a bond that seems to never be broken, um, which I guess you could say in a way will translate over to the ABKC veterans. Wow. Now, with with that, once you finished your last tour, what what was the next step for you once you left? Did you know what you wanted to do um, with your life at that point? Um, I did. I did. Um, I wanted to get into fire, like um, fire protection, fire engineering, um, and I went to community college and. Uh, I was doing uh, fire science, basically learning how fire and stuff like that works, along with firefighting techniques, uh, EMT. I did, like, the EMT basic course, you know, past that. I am a EMT basic, you know, uh, certified in New York State, at least. And uh, I, it was my last semester, and I got offered a job um, with the city who I had been uh, of Binghamton where I live and I had always worked there from March till April um, at a golf course that was city owned and I got offered a full time position so at the time I was like it's more money that's where I want to go so I, so I went ahead and I did that um, leaving like one month of uh, the associates or one uh, semester of the associates behind and unfinished and uh, then I was a laborer for the city of Binghamton for four years or three and a half years um, and then uh, they they decided through uh, PTSD and my traumatic brain injury uh, that I was unable to work to the VA so the VA gave me 100% disability and uh, because of unemployability um, so, you know, I, I left and, uh, I've been doing that ever since, uh, volunteering with the Humane Society in Binghamton, um, you know, and, uh, involved in, like, a Mustang, uh, club, a big Mustang enthusiast, and, uh, I've rescued dogs, uh, you know, rehabbed them, got them home, stuff like that. Now, your injuries occurred on your last tour? Uh, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, I was exposed to multiple IED blasts, and not only being like uh, the guy who's going to go up to a door, slap a stick of C4, C4 on it, and then blow the door off, I was always near a lot of blasts. Uh, so I was uh, diagnosed with a brain injury in 2009, and, um, you know, I am, you know, trying to get... I would love to get the best care offered, um, but the process is very difficult through the VA to get, you know, um, what I think I deserve in treatment. I think I deserve the best. If they, you know, if they say that I have a brain injury, let's get this fixed as much as possible because for me it's, um, it's obviously not communication, uh, but for me it's, it's more the cognitive remembering um, conversations or even reading I got to do more than once um, and I don't know if there is a fix for that and I don't think they do either <laughs> you know it's uh it's really tricky with the traumatic brain injuries do do you do you in your opinion do you think the veterans get the help they they really deserve coming back after after no, war like that no. and getting no not at all I disagree I think that I well I don't disagree with you because that was a question sorry I just disagree that um, you know veterans have to jump through so many hoops to get the proper care that they need I mean I I don't want to name names or anything like that of any personal uh, people that I know that have gone through absolute hell to get the surgeries that they need uh, you know it's 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 really it's it's terrible. The VA healthcare system needs a complete overall. I think I've told you that before. It's terrible. Yeah, we, t we, talked, really yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, because after my father came back from the war, he was diagnosed uh, paranoid schizophrenic and really didn't get the help that he deserved also. Right, right. And, you know, 
Um, I feel I feel that I'm getting sufficient care, um, but I also utilize the vet center. And if any veteran does not know about the vet center, it's federally funded. They have access to the VA's record, but the VA doesn't have access to their records. And they offer like alternative medicine, like I do, what's called MSR. It's basically um, it's called mindful stress reduction. It's a form of yoga and stress reduction at the same time. It's an hour a day, two to three times a week, very beneficial. Um, also, I go to an Iraq-Afghanistan support group where there's other veterans, and we just talk about we, what we talk about. You know, it's whatever happens to come up in everybody's lives that they feel like they want to share and talk about. Um, and I feel in... You know, uh, I feel that that's, you know, um, good outlets. You know, it's good to know that maybe you're not you're not alone and there's nothing wrong with you, that there's other people just like you. You know, uh, just because, like, PTSD and the traumatic brain injuries are such new injuries within the medical health world that it's really difficult for them to diagnose exactly what's wrong and there is no just one fix, you know. Uh, that's what makes it really hard. And then uh, for, for like, any service member coming back with um, amputees, uh, you know, the technology is there, but the best technology is not being utilized. And I think that the best technology needs to be utilized. Uh, you know, these are the men and women that, um, yes, they did volunteer to do their job but they did do their job for their country, and they did preserve the best care possible, just like Congress gets. The VA, the, the, the veterans do not. Now, Congress sends a veteran to war, but yet they, the veteran does not get as good as coverage for, for medical care for life as a congressman does. Did, did, it ever get, did you ever get those dark moments of, in other words, what, what was the toughest times you had to deal with coming back after war? Oh, I was a full-blown alcoholic. I was a full-blown, I mean, that was the only way, uh, functioning alcoholic um, because I self-medicated. You know, I just drank and drank, and I, I drank a lot. I've been sober over five years now. Um, and that was really a turning point in my life. That's when I got my bully. It was like two months afterwards. Um, and I mean, he's, you know, seems like he's always there for me, you know, um, but I'm always there for him, you know, and my darkest moment was not a pretty moment. Uh, it involves, uh, police, you know, it involved me being extremely intoxicated and, uh, you know, I knew that that was the time that I needed to make a change, you know, for my own well-being and health and my families and, and everybody um, that, you know, I had something to do with their life. Uh, I was a Little League baseball coach for six years um, every uh, during that time. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, you know, I, I just... That, that's where it clicked. They got people hit rock bottom with, with, and then they change some way, somehow, you know. And, I mean, I changed. Uh, it was uh, 2008, I believe, December. Yeah, because I asked you about that, about as far as veterans getting help, because, like I said, when my father was going through that, in and out the VA hospitals, and, you know, I never shared this with anybody. I'm going to share it now. Because, you know, because it got to a point where I, I'm, I'm okay with it now after a, a lot of help. My father got to a point where he just couldn't take it anymore, and he took his own life. I did not and know that. Just, at, yeah, and he wound up taking his own life because it just got to a point he was he was tired, he said. wasn't getting the help that he was getting, um, and his opinion from the... From the from the VA hospitals in and out, and and he decided, like I said, to to take his own life. So 
That's why I asked you about that because as far as the help that they really need to focus on the therapy after coming back from something like that. Uh, that's correct, and I 100% agree with you. Um, when a veteran like when a veteran asks for help, you know they need that help. They want that help. They deserve to get it. Um, they shouldn't have to wait. You know, they shouldn't have to wait months. You know, or, or let's say even like a week to get that help. It's 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 immediate is what's needed. I mean, there is there's um, the vet center. Uh, there's what they call a call, uh, combat call center, and they are 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's uh, one eight seven seven war vets. Uh, that's one eight seven seven war vets, and they're there if you're like in a crisis. You can give them a call, and you know they'll 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 they will help you out over the phone, speak speak with you. I've never had to call, but I I know how this program works from being told from vets who've used it. Um, they'll talk to you, and then they'll get you in to see a, a medical health uh, provider um, like ASAP. You know, it's kind of like a red flag when everybody comes into the office on Monday. Like, this person needs to be seen immediately. Like, you know, and that's when they, you know, they, they get you in as quick as they can. Um, I'm actually, like, I have, I'm, I'm, I am I'm consider myself fortunate. My uh, VA outpatient clinic, uh, it's not a hospital, it's an outpatient clinic. Um, but that's literally about four blocks from my house. So I'm just fortunate enough that it's that close, like, Everybody who's there, I have personal relationships with. You know, I mean, there, I do. Uh, not outside of there, but they all know me by name. I've been going there for a while. I'm comfortable there, you know. Um, and I see my uh, my regular doctor and then uh, a psychiatrist there, uh, just because I I am on medication, so I have to see them, you know. You, because man, you talked before. One of your healing processes was. Your bully. How yeah, did you come, yeah. come about uh, getting your boy? Um, I got hit. See, what happened was is uh, a friend of mine, he had his two dogs, and a male and a female. And when he got the male, I just fell in love with him. Like, I'm talking, like, I, always, I, I wanted to babysit him and everything, you know, because I, I had uh, a Dalmatian at the time, but it was, uh, it was really... Uh, my, my nephew's dog, and he was gone to college, and she never really was my dog. She was, you know, the family dog, and I always had been in the bullies because I had been around game dogs and American Pit Bull Terriers and Staffordshire Terriers um, with friends and uh, family even, and I really just wanted, like, I just wanted a pup off of, because I loved the father so much. So, um we were really, really, we're really good friends. We still are to this day. Um, he went to nationals with me, so did his son. Uh, I believe you met them both. Um, and uh, they, they had puppies, and he, and I told him exactly what I wanted. I said, I hope one comes out that it, that has patches on both eyes. That's all I really want. I was like, I'll be happy <laughs> with that. And I was like, as long as it's a male. And the third one out was Rommel. And, uh, you know, and I got him. I had about eight weeks, I believe, seven and a half, maybe eight weeks, after he had his shots and stuff. And, uh, you know, he's, he's been with me ever since. And uh, what helped me in the healing process of that was I, like, I was finally able to bond with something with a heartbeat and, like, somewhat, actually go out in, like, public situations, you know. Um, I always had, like, you know, I get anxiety in, uh, you know, very crowded places and stuff like that. And what happened with Rommel was whenever he was with me, I kind of just was always at ease. And he, he, like, you know, and I was going through a time in my life where I was trying to relearn how to live and do it sober, 
because I was so dependent on alcohol before, it was a complete, complete change. So um, that's why I say that, you know, the bond with him was like part of the healing process. They're, you know, he's always there for me. I'm always there for him, you know. You said something that was interesting. Uh, is it hard to bond with people outside of the outside of your brotherhood of the Marine Corps? Um, at a time it was, but uh, I've been able to do it, um, you know, for a few years. And, um, you know, for me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a genuine person. And, uh, you know, I, I, I call it like I see it. I appreciate people who do the same thing. And, uh, you know, I've, I've obviously, uh, within the bully world, I've, I've made some very good acquaintances and friends and, you know, progressed in the bully world, which has helped out a lot because um, with the ABKC veterans, uh, it was just like an idea on the, on the way home from nationals. They're like, I'm going to ask Dave Wilson if I could start the ABKC veterans, if he's cool with that. And... It was just an idea in the car during conversation about how great of a day I had spending it with um, Mike Thomas and Michael Brown from uh, Train to Go Kennels. Um, you know, Mike Thomas being the first uh, Wounded Warrior um, awardee through the ABKC, and then uh, Michael and myself both at Nationals 2013. Um, I mean, it was just it was just really we all just really bonded like we had, like, I swear it's like I knew him yesterday type deal. And that's where the whole idea came from is because I hadn't really had that experience of bonding with other vets in that, in a totally different social setting than being with other vets. Um, And it felt like, it, it just felt right. So I contacted Dave. Um, later on that week, and uh, he got back to me actually on Veterans Day and uh, told me that, you know, anything I wanted to do with ABKC regarding vets, uh, that as long as it was positive, it, go for it. You know, it's totally you, go go for it. Like, you're more than, you more than have permission to go right ahead and start it right up. And, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's grow, it grew kind of slowly at first, but, uh, there's a lot of members now I know in the uh, Facebook group. I think it's like 76 last time I looked. So, I mean, that's pretty good for since November, you know, um, for membership. Um, got a guy in Italy. Um, he's stationed in Italy right now, but he'll be coming to North Dakota uh, within the next year. Um, Puerto Rico. Um, obviously, the continental United States. I don't believe Hawaii. Um, where was the other country? There's another country I'm missing other than Italy. Um, I can't remember it off the top of my head. But uh, that's just for members that are, you know, they have dogs that are ABKC registered, which is which is cool. I mean, the more veterans, the better. You know, we can, you know, talk to each other. You know, anybody's. I'm always available. Anybody's always welcome to give me a call, you know. And I love talking dogs with other veterans, you know. I spent a few hours on the phone with uh, with uh, another ABKC veteran just talking about dogs the, the other day, you know, and it's enjoyable, you know. It, it kind of opens the door to see what else is out there and talk to other people around the country that are also service members too, you know, Um you know, I'm not not saying that if you're not a service member, don't talk to the person. But um, <laughs> it, it's just the 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 idea behind it was um, unity and positivity, and it's kind of like a brotherhood within the brotherhood. You know, the ABKC is it, it's a group, and this is just another group within when with inside of it. You know, um, and and that's how. That's how that all got formed. It was just out of an idea. It was just an idea driving back from Nashville. <laughs> was that your first bully show? No, it wasn't. Um, I had been to a oh. few different ones up here in the Northeast before. Um, but, 
you know, that was, I would always go as a spectator. You know, I never took my dog or nothing, you know. Uh, just went as a spectator because I love to see different dogs. I love to see what other people are producing and what other people um, envision as the American bully. And, I mean, there's other breeds now, too, and everything's growing in popularity from shorty bulls to old English bulldogs, you know, the, the English bulldog. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's just the ABKC is really growing big, big. I mean, the shows are getting larger than they were a few years ago, you know. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've noticed. Yeah. How how did the uh how did you get how did they get in contact with you for the award? Did did someone what have happened, to nominate what, you or what happened what was, the was I guess it, there was a post on Facebook and a friend of mine saw it and a friend of mine got in contact with them. And they basically told them what who I was and what I had done and um, you know, that I had uh Rommel, my four-year-old, and then Pat and my five-year-old. Rommel's a stable bully. Um, and uh, Pat and his, uh, she's, she's now eight months. But at the time, she was only like three months. Uh, she's a female that I uh, purchased from uh, Angel and Wayne, uh, A&W bullies up in uh, Weir, New Hampshire. Um, and she's off of Champion Cake Boss, uh, Grand Champion Stack Sun. Oh, so what's the bloodline you like dealing with? Um, I absolutely, I uh, <clears throat> I like uh, Gotti line. Um, I do, uh, and, and Razor's Edge. Uh, those are the two bloodlines I like. Currently, I just have um, that that form of Gotti line pre Dax Romeo, Mike Lance Tombstone Grand Champion Stacks. Uh, kick boss, you know, that's that's where, where you know, where my Gotti line is. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it's, I'm just I'm just beginning to breed. And then I have my shorty bull also, which is uh, Blue Rock and Blue River. Um, she's, uh, she, I got her from Jason Griggs, uh, president of the Elite Edge. And uh, He's, uh, and she's an absolutely amazing addition to the family. Uh, I purchased her uh, for my mother, you know, and I wanted my mom to be able to walk one of the dogs, but she can't walk the bullies once, you know, they're, they're too powerful for her at seven years old. So uh, I got her the shorty bull, and the shorty bull is just, every time I see her, she's, she's just something else, and she's got so much drive. And she gets along great with the other dogs, too. Let me ask you, Nick, now, the logo yeah. that's, that's part of the ABKC Veterans, did you design that logo? Um, I did not. One of my best friends did, the guy that I grew up with. Um, I have two friends uh, that I grew up with, uh, Martin, Yvonne, and Dave Feely, and they both went to the University of Buffalo, for graphic design and just the you know our friendship you know whenever I have anything that's uh, that I want to design I just kind of throw it at them um, I just had uh, our kennel logo um, done and uh, Dave did that um, they're both I they're both I literally have known them since kindergarten and uh, you know great friends of mine that do outstanding work they're just not in the bully community now, is there a special meaning to the to the to the different emblems on the shield? Um, on the, you have the Elite Edge logo, um, myself uh, and Eric uh, Meaton, who that is down in South Carolina. Uh, we are kennel partners for two full hunting kennels. Translates over to Devil Dog. Uh, there already is a Devil Dog kennels. Um, out there, so we couldn't do that. So we used uh, what the Germans called us after the uh, Battle of Bella Wood um, in World War II, um, because there wasn't a two full hunting kennels. So uh, that's what we went with. Um, and uh, we also have the Marine Corps Eagle Globe and Anchor on there. And because we are both uh, Marines. Um, Eric was uh, forced reconnaissance, and I was combat engineer. 
Uh, we both served uh, in combat overseas. Uh, he served in Iraq also. Um, and then the head was just the coolest designed, devilish looking, somewhat dog type head I had ever seen. So that's what I went with. <laughs> You have right now the uh, the the shirts that you have right now. Yeah, the, the ABKC uh, shirts veteran that, shirts. Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, you you want to talk about on, the, the special deal the special deal you got going on with that right now? Okay, well, um, I uh, I did those shirts, and uh, those were pre order only, and different people had ordered them, and I think sold around sixty five shirts, I believe it was. And uh, what um, James Cooper and I have always been in touch and talked, and you know, uh, I had I kept mentioning to him that I wanted to do like an AVKC veterans line on with bully supplies, and uh, we talked last month, and it's been you know this process going on about you know, the, them sponsoring us. And Bully Supplies, James Cooper, um, is the official sponsor of the AVKC Veterans now. Um, you will see our logo on ring banners. Um, you will see it, you know, um, at Bully Supplies. And within the next, uh, as safe, it's a safe uh, assumption to say probably two months, there will be a decent line out, um, you know, with kids and women sizes. Uh, which that was something that was uh, more difficult for me to do and handle on my own. So now you'll be able to get anything ABKC veterans uh, through James. Uh, there'll be hoodies and T-shirts, um, and then, like I said, there'll be kid sizes and stuff like that too. But really, uh, you know, James really stepped it up and uh, was totally behind us from day one. Um, you know, when I received the award at Nationals, I spoke to him that day, and uh, you know, he, he was truly sincere. He was a very nice, approachable man, and uh, I developed a relationship from there, just like I did with you. Now, for the people that don't know, the the proceeds helps fund the ABKC Veterans Group. Could you talk about what exactly the ABKC Veteran Group does for people that might okay. not know? Okay, like. Uh, we don't charge any money or anything like that to be part of the group. We just want veterans to know other veterans who are into the American bully and breeds recognized by the AVKC. Um, so, like, there's a percentage that comes back, and we'll use that to, like, if we have a veteran that, let's say, um, is looking for um, a dog, and I have and I have many breeders approaching me, showing me different dogs that they have, from you know puppies to adults. So like I have a, a log book of you know what's available. Um, Some want you know you know it's it's a two thousand dollar dog easy, but they they just want you know maybe five hundred in shipping because it's going to a veteran uh, or you know, they're donating a dog. It could be a dog that is retired. You know, um, I've seen, you know, champion dogs retired out, you know, and stuff like that, you know, just to go to a good pet home, um, you know, because you don't want the dogs to end up in, in you know, the human, uh, in any type of setting like, you know, a rescue or a kill, definitely not a kill shelter. Um, that I mean, that's the, the focus is just helping um, new veterans who want a companion to get dogs. Ultimately, the biggest goal is to get um, an American bully uh, service trained um, through a reputable uh, service training agency. I have been in touch with multiple different ones, and I found one that I'd like to work with. I'm not going to name it yet because we're not, you know, official yet. Um, but I would love to see a uh, a service bully go to a veteran that lives in a BSL area, and I have that veteran. I just need I just need to get the the right dog, get it, and have it service trained. And um, you know, there's there's money that comes along with it, um, but you know, every case is different and. Um, 
will also help with transportation um, costs when, like, a veteran does uh, um, purchase, a, let's say, a dog or is getting a dog donated to them. Like, whatever is in the kiddie pool that I've got, um, then that then I'll, I'll I'll help out in whatever way I can, whether it's a hundred or two hundred or the the whole fee of transporting a dog. Um, let's see. Oh, also, like if we have, not every show will we have an AVKC veteran show, but um, I encourage all AVKC veterans to, you know, get in touch with me and let me know what shows they are going to. I can tell you at Allentown, May thirty first. Um, at the Spotsylvania show, May 3rd, um, and Nationals, the AVKC veterans will have a booth there. And if uh, it's first come, first serve, if you want to be with our booth, instead of spending money on your own booth, like let's say you're only showing one or two dogs, you can bring one or two dogs in. But, you know, usually a booth, each booth has a dog limit. So, you know, that's why I say first come, first serve. Any veterans always welcome to come to the booth at any of the shows, you know, hang out, you know, um, let's talk dogs and, you know, bring the dogs by, let's take pictures, you know. I mean, uh, that's that's another thing that we're offering. Um, you know, some, I've, uh, I've received free booths um, in the past from AVKC and James Cooper. Um, there, you know, uh, which is a definite plus because, um, you know, basically it will come out of my pocket for a booth or um, it's donated at this time um, just because we haven't, you know, done tons of fundraisers. Let me ask you, Nick, because like, like you were saying, with, with – uh, the different donations of of dogs to the ABKC veterans. A lot of times they might not be uh, they're pet quality dogs. Let's say pet quality Correct. bullies. Would you like to see from the the ABKC like a special class where a, these ABKC veterans can show in a group because they know it's not might not be the show quality type of bullies, but at least they're able to interact with their dogs at the show as well as just not being in the booth? Is that something would you um, like to see one day? I would, I would love to see, like, well, I mean, if they're a save-a-bully and it's a save-a-bully event, they can go show their dogs. Okay. Um, if, okay. The AV, okay. if the AVKC for, like, you know, if it's a fun show, if there's a fun show going on at any show, that would be cool if there's a, at least a substantial amount of veterans at the show who have dogs to show. Why not put us in a group together? That would be awesome in my book. Um, I didn't even think of that. Thank you. <laughs> it's a great idea. <laughs> there's another announcement you want to you want to make that you part of another group as well. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it would be cool as long as it's a fun show, you know, because uh, you'd obviously have dogs from different standards all in one, one, you know, judging. So that has to be part of like a fun show, right? I mean, you know, we can't, you can't. It would, it wouldn't be champion. It wouldn't be points towards a championship. That's that's for sure. You know, yeah. but it, it could just be something within, you know, the ABKC veterans, you know, you know, su such and such one that, you know, the the best of the veteran dogs. You know, that would be cool. I'd be happy with that. Now, I'm going to slide over a little bit. At one okay. point, you you were uh, Elite Edge Guardian, correct, I think? Elite Edge Bully Guardian, correct. Correct. Now, uh, I think that title has changed, correct? That is correct. Uh, the title changed uh, officially yesterday. Um, I am a full Lead Edge member now. Uh, our kennel, Eric Maton and I, um, we are both full Lead Edge members along with our kennel, two full hunting kennels. How, how was that process? Um. I'll tell you what, when I got the phone call that I was being asked to be a bully guardian, I was completely blown away. Did not see it coming. They had no clue. 
did not see it coming. Um, <laughs> I, I, I actually told Jason I was uh, Jason Griggs because he called me. I told him I was like, I need like a week to think about this. Like I'm, you know, <laughs> I was kind of blown away. Like I wasn't, you know, and it is, it's, it's joining a group. You know, um, you know, there's dues involved. Um, you know, um, it, it, it was a big decision for me. So, um, for me, for myself, and basically within that week, I came up with what I wanted to ask them. You know, what I want answers on how do we, how is this done, how is that done, and how can the Elite Edge help the ABKC veterans, you know. Uh, because, you, you know, yes, sure, the idea was mine, but the ABKC Veterans is every member. You know, that's that's what the ABKC Veterans is. And, like, um, you know, I, I have no problem, you know, saying, sure, I founded it. But it was just an idea. Without the veterans, it can't happen, you know. And, you know, I try to help organize as much as I can. But, you know, I'm not the only person out there that's doing things. Um, you know, we have representatives throughout the uh, United States, mainly on the East Coast. Uh, but, you know, we have recs out there, you know, in, in different states. Uh, I, uh, so, you know, it, it, it's, you know, I wanted to see exactly what the Elite Edge, you know, could try to help us do and help us grow. Um, and me being, being generally new to breeding, um, I, I wanted to learn from people who had good programs, and I felt that it was the right fit for me. Being part of the Elite, Elite, Elite Edge uh, group, do you get, do they throw ideas at you as far as helping you grow the ABKC veterans group as well? We're in the process of talking about that more. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, just being announced, uh, I'm very new, and a lot of members, um, you know, have contacted me and stuff that I didn't previously talk to. Um, but, you know, that's that's something that, you know, it's going to take time to figure that out, exactly what, what has to be done to do it properly because you don't want to do it wrong. Um, Bully Supplies, James Cooper, I can't give enough, like, like, thank you to for for going ahead and taking us on and and, and supporting the group. Um, you know, the clothing line is huge because it, it it's it was a bit of a headache for me to do. Uh, I'll be honest. You know, I had never done anything like that before, where I was collecting money from people, you know, and sending out packages, you know. But I knew that. The want was there because people were asking, so I just went ahead and said, all right, how about these logos? We did a vote on it, and I, I posted up in a group and said, like, what logo do you like better? Here's two different designs, and we went with the one that got the more votes and started getting them out to people. There's still a few people who haven't got theirs yet, you know, um, but, I mean, for now on, it'll be Bully Supplies is going to be... Um, having the clothing line for, uh, available. And, that, and, and you, just just to clarify that with people, you don't have to be an uh, ABKC veteran to, to get these shirts. Anybody can get these shirts, correct? Correct. Of course, of course. If you, if you just want to – I mean, I, I had people order them who were not – had anything to do with dogs just to support – the idea of a veterans organization, uh, you know, it's it's for everybody. It really is. Do you? I mean, do you support the breed? Do you? You know, um, if you support the breed and you're also um, supporting the military and the troops, then you know, of course, you know, try if you if you have the funds to to buy a shirt, um, especially like. I'd say around like Memorial Day or uh, Veterans Day, that that would be awesome, you know. 
um, because it's going to help us accomplish, you know, the goals that we have and, and what we do for each other um, financially um, because, you know, I mean, nobody's made of money, you know. we got to figure out a way to do it, you know, respectfully and uh, little bit by little bit. With, with the organization being as new as it is, have you ever uh, reached out to, like, the Wounded Warriors Project and other veterans organizations just to talk about, Wounded. you know, the bullies themselves? Uh, yes, I have, and it's mixed. Uh, some organizations do, don't want anything to do with them. Some do. Um, the stigma attached to the pit bull and the American bully looking like it does um, just turns them off. Uh, there was one uh, organization in central New York uh, about an hour from me, and I wanted to complete Rommel's service training through them because um, he did the, the CGC, the Canine Good Citizen, and I wanted to complete the service training for PTSD TBI. And when I called them, they were like, yeah, 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 everything was good. The first 10 minutes of conversation was great. And then literally I told them his breed, and they were like, no. I was like, he's a save bully Like, you know, like, <laughs> and they, they, no. But other places will take the breed on because they know what the breed is capable of, you know. Um, it's just, it's hit and miss. Um, I don't know a percentage on it, but it's hit and miss. You know, in, in our area, in the D.C. area, we have, uh, the Walter Reed Bethesda Naval Center, probably like the yeah. largest in the area. Do, do you know if, because I, 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 I've never, never dawned on me, that has bullies ever been allowed up there, you know, as service dogs? To your knowledge, I do not know, but I got something that I want to find out. <laughs> now that you know, now that you say it, I want to. I'd like to find that out. See if it's. Uh, see if that's there. See, I don't know if they deal with service dogs uh, uh, at Walter Reed. Um, I never received any treatment there, so I. I just don't know. Um, it being a government. It being a government run VA healthcare operation, I would assume there's probably not too many service dogs there because most service dogs are coming from nonprofit organizations. Okay, okay. And like you said, with the stigma of the bully the way it is right now, it's, it's like a lot of people said, hey, you can't, they're not even allowed on a basis right now. So Right, right. But there are a few deployed overseas in Afghanistan. Oh, talk about that, because I didn't know that. Um, I know of two. I know of an American Temple Terrier, or I'm sorry, American Staffordshire Terrier, and there is um, there is an American bully. Um, I'm, I'm, I've been trying to get more information on it for like the past six months, but I believe... There's a picture on my Facebook of him, of him and he's actually chilling up on his on the uh, sh the shoulders of the soldier uh, who's handling him. So, <laughs> oh, speaking see, of that. It, it's weird. It's weird because it's like a double standard because the military put in BSL for certain breeds, and you know the pit bull terrier fell into that BSL in certain areas. You know. When, on, basis, of overseas, on basis in the United the States, okay. but they're serving overseas. That's interesting that that they it can is, do it overseas it? without hearing this. Yeah. <laughs> do isn't you know it? any vets that – it's crazy. I mean, that's what I was just thinking about that, and it made me think about uh, with your group, the ABKC Veterans, do any veterans have your shirts overseas in, in Afghanistan yeah. or Iraq? Uh, there was, there was, um, a wife of a, of a army soldier who was in Afghanistan and he was going to be home in three weeks. 
So I don't think she sent it to him. It's going to be like his homecoming gift because he has a few bullies, and they live in California. So it's okay. kind of like his welcome home gift because of the, the time frame, or else he would have had it when he was uh, in Afghanistan. Um, there's uh, a Marine station in Italy. He has a shirt. Uh, I can't I keep, keep forgetting the other address. Oh, oh uh, Poland. Uh, Royal Collars. Uh, Royal Collars has a shirt that did the uh, collar for Rommel with the ABKC Veterans logo on it. And just, you know, if anybody is looking for a custom collar, Royal Collars, if you get the AVKC Veterans logo on it, he will offer you a discount. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, you know, that, that was something he was just very proud to be able to do with the collar for Rommel, you know, knowing the background behind me and him. And... uh he, he offered that, you know, he, and uh, he's part of the ABKC Veterans Group, so he's easy to find. That's on Facebook. Um, he's easy to find and hit him up. He communicates through Facebook. Uh, you know, uh, you send 50% of the payment up front, and then 50% when it's done along with shipping. But shipping is expensive. It's $75. So uh, just prepare yourself for that, just so that you know. Uh, uh, but I mean, the collars range in price from like 150 to 400 U.S. dollars. Yeah, you better have some deep pockets. <laughs> me, yeah, me I mean, you. it's not. Like, I didn't buy them for all the dogs. I I only got one for Rommel. That was it. You know, I figured he deserved it. I'm, I'm gonna ask you a serious question, and this and this sort of in hindsight, if okay. if. Ramo wasn't a part of, didn't come into your life. Where did where did you see your life going? If you don't think if if he was if he didn't come into your life when he did, I didn't I didn't know what to expect from the next the the the. I didn't really look at the future. Like having him gave me the structure of taking care of something, feeding it, you know, exercising it, along with exercise for myself. Um, you know, like, that. that's, like, I didn't, I actually felt like I had no purpose. You know, like, imagine, like, being told you're unemployable. You know, due to your injuries in combat, you are unemployable. That that was like I mean for a man that's I mean that was a shot to be a provider. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you're that, supposed that, to be a provider. Be that's the way our society is is brought up. Uh, it took me a long time to adjust, and he was just kind of like my saving grace because I don't have children, uh, you know, so I don't have like children to take care of or anything like that. So. Uh, I always had, uh, yeah, I'll get, let me get this right, exotic pets, not exotics. Uh, I had, like, snakes. I had, like, chameleons and stuff like that. Uh, I was in the breeding them, but that that's a whole different story. But he was, like, my first dog that was mine, you know what I mean? And the, just the, the companionship that was there, and, I mean, extremely intelligent dog, um, you know, was easy to train, and he went everywhere with me. I was coaching, you know, nine, uh, well, two different leagues. Seven to nine uh, was like our our program that we had twice a week to prepare the kids for when they were nine years old and could play little league. And uh, then at nine years old, they play little league t- through their twelfth, uh, so they're twelve years old. And uh, I did that down in the center city of uh, Binghamton. And literally, I was the only white guy on the team up until, like, my last year, I think it was. Um, and then we had two two white twin brothers on the team. But uh, that, that was down in Center City, so, like, I made a big difference in their life, you know. Um, I got some kid, kids that have already graduated high school, and I'm so proud of them. I got one this year that it, I'm really, really happy that, you know, he's graduating and that he's going to be moving on with his life. And, you know, they he took the right route. Instead of taking a crappy route, I always kind of 
he was uh, one of my favorites, I guess you could say, and I always kind of took him under my wing. He was one of the captains of the team. And even after he left the Little League program, he stayed around and he helped coach. And he was playing the next league up, Babe Ruth League. Uh, and then he started keeping score and, I mean, doing everything. So um, he graduates this year. I'm really proud of him, really proud of him. Let me ask you, Nick, how can a non-ABKC veteran help out with the organization? What what can someone who's not a vet do to help out with your organization to help it grow? If they want to reach the out to you. Spread oh, the word. If they want to reach out, you know, spread the word. Um, you know, if you know people with ABKC dogs who are veterans, they might not know about the group. You know, spread the word. You know, if you know a veteran who who is maybe having hard times and doesn't they they don't have anything but themselves you know um if you think that a dog might be right for them run it by them see if they're interested and see if they're interested in this breed and what they know about it and have them get in touch with me you know through facebook and then we can talk on the phone With the time running down short, Nick, I really, really, really appreciate you coming on tonight and and letting, telling your story and to talk about the group. Where, where do you see the, the veterans group over the next year? Over the next year, um, I hope to have well, something well, planned. Well, in probably a better question. Where would you like to see it be in the, uh, in the next year? Uh, over the next year, I just want to continue to see numbers grow. Uh, I I want to I want to hear stories. You know, I want to see more. I want to see pictures of dogs. I want to know what people are doing for breeding and uh, they're, how they're doing at shows. You know, that general interaction with the bully community. Just you know, that that's that's where I want to see it. I want to see that more within each veteran. You know, um, I talk to a lot of people, and it's not going to be uh, on a post. So, you know. Maybe people don't know that I'm talking to a lot of people, but, you know, feel free to contact me, you know, anytime. Let's talk. I love talking dogs. I love talking to different bloodlines, dogs. You know, it's a, it's a good thing. Um, real quick, I got to give a shout-out to Rand Soriano for this week. I contacted him and got about getting uh, one of my pedigrees certified, and he was like, uh, oh, okay, uh, you know, no problem, 50% off. And I was like, is that for all vets? He said, of course. He's like, it's the least I can do. So Rian Soriano officially, uh, you know, this past week said, you know, certified pedigrees are $10 for uh, any uh, military veteran. So, you know, get your pedigrees certified, um, and, you know, you can save, you're saving yourself some money at the same time. All right, and... I, once again, Nick, thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, telling your story. And we're going to try to get that word spread about the group so I can get uh, get more help out there to the veterans out there in a different way. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And uh, always a pleasure, Zeb. Uh, hope you're, I hope you rock that Redskins hat this year. Hope you rock it good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man, thank you so much on that red skin hat, by the way, man. That, hey, we, yeah, tell everybody your team. Tell everybody your team. Uh, I'm the Oakland Raiders fan. Oakland Raiders. I'm the Raiders. Oakland Raiders <laughs> fan since Bo Jack, before Bo Jackson got injured. <laughs> you know, so I've been, I've been a fan of Oakland Raiders for a long time. Yankees baseball, Chicago Bulls basketball, and uh, I, love, I love Pittsburgh Penguins hockey. Interesting. <laughs> a whole lot of different it's all over, cities involved. All you over are New place York and only one New York team. <laughs> That's crazy. But again, Dick, thank you for your time tonight. Hey, anytime, Zab. Thank you. All right. Take care, Nick. Yep. You too. Bye bye. That was Nick Legos, ladies and gentlemen, of the ABKC Veterans, now Lead Edge member. I just uh, really thank him tonight for coming on and uh, spreading the word about the group. And tonight, man, I, I got a different song tonight, man. I'm dedicating this song, man, to my Uncle Philip. 
proud U.S. Marine, R.I.P., rest in peace, man. I remember I used to uh, hear this in this room, man. One of his favorite group, the Commodores, man. And this, this one of the songs I used to hear a lot up in, uh, up in this room. So I dedicate this to him tonight. Thank you each and every one for tuning in. God bless. <laughs>